More about the new rules and also the property tax cap that just passed the Senate today is Republican Senator John Flanagan of Long Island. Senator, thanks very much for your time. No problem. Thank you. So explain briefly why it is that the Senate Republicans felt like this rules change was something they needed to do so quickly after retaking the majority? Well, I, I don't agree that it's so quickly after we've retaken the majority. This is something that's been talked about for a while. We extended the rules temporarily a couple of times already. At least three of the four rule changes that we're trying to make permanent right now were already in the temporary rules that we added. Uh, we are trying to get the House governing. We're trying to function in a, an efficient and appropriate manner. And we believe that the rules changes that we made today are going to do that. And they're going to help make the place a better place to work. Okay. I don't think anybody would quibble with the desire to get the Senate chamber working in a less dysfunctional manner, but I think sure. the Senate Democrats feel that the effort to take away the tie-breaking vote that Lieutenant Governor Bob Duffy has is subverting the Constitution, that's their words, and also um, disenfranchising upstaters since he's from Rochester, and it seems that at least on the legal point, uh, the governor agrees. Um, I like Bob Duffy, and he is from upstate, but that has absolutely nothing to do with this issue. This issue is about how the Senate is supposed to run. The Constitution is clear that the Senate sets its own rules and governs its body. Now, there could be rules changes that people don't like, but they are certainly within the purview and the province and the power of the Senate to decide. I believe that the Constitution is clear. And really what this does, had this rule been in effect last year, at the time that everything sort of went awry in June and July, right. um, this would not have been an issue. Because essentially what we're saying is, if someone gets elected in January with 32 votes, that the only way you can change that is by an affirm affirmative vote of 32 other members okay. at any given time. Are you concerned then that at some point soon there's going to be a deadlock, that your, one of your members is going to leave and there's going to be a situation where there would be a deadlock because you'd lose a seat? Right now you're at 32-30. You, you don't have a deadlock situation. Sure. And the Democrats were at 32-30 for two years. We were at 32-30 before that. So things happen. Um, issues crop up. You take a look at the rules. You review them. Here's another rule change that we put in there today about the codes committee and what kind of bills were to go there. We didn't think it was an appropriate way to function. These things evolve. They can change. I think this is a wise course of action because it provides for some certainty and continuity. And in reality, I think it will go a long way towards helping the Senate function, regardless of which party is in power. Okay, but you're not, just to be clear, you're not expecting some member of your conference to leave soon or otherwise depart for some reason and losing a seat, which would, of course, be problematic no. for you. No, these are things that we've discussed internally, and I don't believe any Republican is going to leave, and I don't believe any Democrat is going to leave. Okay. I, I also want to ask you about that property tax cap that passed. Yes. It actually passed with bipartisan support. Not surprising. It passed twice when the Democrats were in control. Some of the Democratic uh, senators, your colleagues, asked um, for this to be held off until you could actually see what the governor proposes in his budget tomorrow, because if there are very large education cuts, some of these communities might come back and say, uh, hey, about that cap, yeah, we're a little worried about revenue raising. Um, the people who think that we should wait are so far divorced from reality, it's hard to, for me to even comprehend that. Property taxes are the number one issue in every community, in every corner, in every county in the state of New York. I don't care where you live, what kind of affluence or not there is in a different community. We need to do something now. This has taken far too long. The assembly needs to act. They need to join us. This is a legitimate step forward. And by the way, it's governor's program bill number one. So we have the weight and the power uh, of the new governor, Governor uh, Andrew Cuomo, and this is his program bill. We're supporting his effort because he recognizes the severity and the importance of this issue. So you, there's, no, you, there's no reason to wait. In fact, this should have been done a long time ago. And frankly, Senator, wait, oh, just to interrupt for one second, I'm sorry. Do you yep. believe that the reason that the governor sent this up in the manner that he did with his first program bill was specifically to box the Assembly Democrats into trying to get this cap passed? Look, anybody can interpret it the way they want. I don't think if someone feels they're backed into a corner, then that's their fault. I mean, it's not like property taxes is a new issue. Virtually every candidate, whether you won or lost, campaigned on this very substantially in the past election. The people expect that we're going to do something. In my communities, people are choking on property taxes. So this whole idea of waiting, that's just ridiculous. We need to act now, and there's plenty of things that we can do. Yes, the budget's going to come out tomorrow. Yes, it's going to be painful. And yes, it's going to be ugly. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't be taking very strong steps. Property tax cap, a spending cap at the state level, a supermajority for tax and fee increases. Then we're not doing this in isolation. This is part of an overall approach that really lets the public know that the things we talked about during the campaign 
are actually the things that we're going to enact while we're here. Okay, government. just real briefly, Senator, this cap did not include mandate relief linked to it, which some argue is necessary to prevent bankrupting school districts. Liz, I couldn't agree with you more. We have a mandate relief bill, relief bill on the floor today. There's a comprehensive group doing Medicaid and local government mandate relief that's going to report on March 1st at the charge of the governor. So I firmly and fully believe that we need property tax cap, we need mandate relief, we need regulatory reform, we need economic development. It's no one thing in isolation, but certainly when we're dealing with the public, they are choking on property taxes. We need to do a cap now. Okay. Senator John Flanagan, I want to thank you very much for joining me from the Capitol tonight. All right. Let's have a good night. Be well. Thanks, John.